Hi everybody. I don't know if this is going to be a part one and a half or a part two of this uh, cassette deck video. <laughs> I hate working on cassette decks. Anyway, um, where we left with part one, we had everything put together and we successfully played a tape. However, I found several problems. I had to remove the transport and do some more work on it. I'm still not happy with it. I'll show you why. And as a result, we're going to have to order some parts in, which I already found, luckily, and are coming in. But some of these old plastic parts uh, have gotten worn with age. And this is something you're going to run into on gear of this vintage. Now, the average person might be able to just put a tape in this, listen to it, and be happy with it, go through the alignment. But I am absolutely not happy with it. The other thing I noticed is playing just a music tape like we did on that first video, which was this uh, big band tape. It sounded okay, but when you do an actual frequency test with a frequency test tape, this has some pretty serious drop off after about uh, in the in the mid frequency range, you know, in the just below 10 kilohertz, it really starts to nosedive really seriously. And this is not because of the test tape or anything like that. And I'm not sure yet whether it's the tape head itself or it has to do with some alignment issues as well. So there's multiple things we're going to have to do. The pinch rollers are definitely going to need to be rebuilt. I'm going to have to send those out. I'll share some of that information with you here before this video is over. And I had to order a different idler tire. The one that I received from VintageAudio.net is absolutely the incorrect size. It's not the right one, even though that's what it's, it's listed for, the CTF1250, but it is not the correct size. It's actually thinner than, than the correct one. That's causing problems. So we have a whole bunch of things we have to address before we can really get into this. All of these things, unfortunately, are going to take several weeks to send out, to have done, and to, ha and to return. So what I'm going to do in the meantime is, even though it's putting the cart before the horse, I'm going to fix this regardless of what it takes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to progress with the, uh, you know, the restoration of the power supply and some things like that. So we'll do that in this video. And then this project may kind of go slowly because I have to wait for things to come in. So that's where we are. I'll show you some things that I did. Uh, I rebuilt the real motor and I will go over that process with you and show it to you and a couple other things. So hopefully this video will have a little bit of interesting stuff in it. So we have the test cassette in here. I'm just putting a three kilohertz tone just to see where we're at. And it's not good. Start this up. We do have, you know, the VU meters. But when I look at the scope, let's see here. I don't know. Let me get you zoomed in a little better. And you can see that's not good. The, just see how it's jumping around. And if we look up at our wow and flutter meter, I'll shut the light off so you can see. It's all over the daggone place. Now, when I looked, I noticed here is the ugly truth of the matter. If I can get you focused in, Let's see if we can get to the location. Let's see where we are. Here we go. Okay, let me lock this down. Yeah, that's the idler tire. I ordered this and it is supposed to be for this unit, but as you can see, it is not fitting on there properly at all. So I'm going to have to pull out another one and see if uh, it fits better. But that one is definitely not right, and I know that is causing some of our problem. 
Again, our pinch rollers are definitely not in the greatest shape. They're going to have to get sent out. But I really believe that uh, we can do better than we're getting right now. So we're going to pull this all back apart. And this is the fun of working on cassettes. This is why I don't like working on tape decks. They're so fidgety with all these mechanical things. And even the quality of the belts and all that will affect all this. Um, <clears throat> you know, those of you who say good enough <laughs> and, and, you know, you don't, the, the little things don't matter. Well, this is definitely not the video for you <laughs> because I've learned that little tiny details do matter on cassette, especially high end like this. The smallest little thing like that will cause problems. Now looking down at the actual capstan motor, it's behaving and working very well. It's tracking really well. So I think where we need to go with this is we need to take it all back apart and see if we can put a different tire on there. <clears throat> okay, believe it or not, it only took about 15 minutes to get it back down to this point. It's not that bad. It looks worse than it is. But here is the brand new rubber tire that I pulled off and you can see I don't know if you can see but it's not the right width it is definitely not the right width and it is a little bit tight on there but I expected that but it definitely isn't the right width now here's another one and when you look at it it fits in there very tightly see that and it's ever so slightly different in diameter. And both of these were in little bags that said CTF 1250. So I don't know what to think, but I'm gonna put this one on because it's the right one. And we're just gonna see uh, if that makes it any better. Okay, while I'm in here, I might as well do the maintenance on the real motor, which is what I'm doing right now. So, the hardest part is getting this outside shield apart. And you can see there's a little rubber grommet in here, and uh, we'll deal with that later. But these little things, these little tabs here, are very, very tightly peened over there. And the way I deal with it is I'll just take a little burr grinder a little bit and just kind of clean those off a little bit. And then when we put this back on, we'll peen it over like on the corner a little bit. So that takes the outer shield off. Once you get that out, you have your permanent magnet and a little bushing in there. We want to make sure that's good. We have the motor brushes themselves. And you can see these ones still have some, some wear left on them. Even though there is some crud in there, that curvature is good. You want that. And you can see all the dirt in there. And we're going to clean that off. And we're just going to use some of our basic contact cleaner to, to get that off of there. Because this will dry with no residue. So once again, we're just going to use our QD electronic cleaner by CRC. I use this a lot. And I'm just going to spray this off into, into the waste can, into some paper towels. And it'll just clean everything off. You, just, you don't want to spray it real hard because you don't want to bend anything. I'll just clean that off like that. And we'll give it a couple seconds to dry. And you can see, just that quick, it cleans it right off. You don't want to rub that stuff because it'll just powder it down more and just rub it into the plastic. So you just want to spray that off. And you can see it cleans it right off. And then I will get up close and I will inspect the brushes and make sure they're good. Then we're going to have to do the service on the 
on the armature here. And you can see that's going to need cleaned a little bit. We'll do that in a second. And this motor is very special in that if you look up front, you have these little centrifugal clutches in here. And they're weighted. And as this thing spins, you can see it's pre-adjusted. As it spins, it brings in the other coils. And basically, it will regulate. These things will open and close. And they'll turn on the other coil and turn off the other set of coils to regulate the speed. So it'll switch between torque, you know, higher torque, lower speed, lower torque, higher speed, and it'll just keep flipping back and forth uh, and maintain a constant speed and torque. It's, it's kind of, it's mechanical, so it's really cool the way it works. These motors don't have any electronic regulation at all. So they don't really care about current or voltage. They just, as long as you have enough of them to keep it going, it'll run. So anyway, we're going to clean this up. And I, I can't do this on camera. It's just entirely too touchy. And these motors are way too hard to find. So I'm going to clean this all up and put it back together. And uh, we'll be back as soon as I do that. Okay, the stator, or I mean the armature, we cleaned off with CR with our CRC Electromotive, and I've done, I've shown that on other videos, that stuff. And I cleaned off the brush area with a little cotton swab soaked in the in the Electromotive, and we have the bushing down there all nice and cleaned out. We're now going to take just the tiniest little drop of machine oil, of a very light machine oil for these little motors. And we're just going to put a little drop down in here. That's it. That's all you need. And then we're going to put this in. Now, you can loosen these up and move them, but I don't like to do that because I don't like to change the position of the brushes. These brushes are already seated in here. So we're just going to have to very carefully work the brushes over top of this as I put this in. And I'm going to do that off camera because as you can see, you know, reaching around the camera is not real easy and it's very easy to bend these little brush holders. So we're going to do that off camera and when I get it on there, I'll come back. Okay, the armature is now back into the bottom bushing and the brush block. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take a tiny little drop of oil and put it on the bottom of the shaft, not on the top. And then that way, and we'll put a tiny little drop inside this little bushing here. And that'll be just enough to lubricate it. That's all you need. So. And then we can clean the excess off. Hope I can see what I'm doing here. There we go. I'm just going to spread that around just ever so slightly. And then I'll put a little drop here, just like that. And that's enough. And that ought to do it. These bronze bushings are actually somewhat self-lubricating so you don't have to use much oil if, if at all but it is good to put a little bit of oil in there to kind of reseed all this okay now I'm gonna assemble this from the top down and this is where it's gonna get kind of tricky because the magnet inside here is gonna want to pull everything apart so we got to be very careful feeding this in and I'm going to have to do this off camera so I can get lined up. All right, here we go. And then I'm just going to rotate this until it's lined up. And I'm going to pop this back together like so. And get it lined up. And we should be good to go. Okay, I have her hooked up for a test run and it's running pretty smooth and pretty quiet, especially for a permanent magnet motor. 
It's uh, balanced really well. I'll move the microphone closer to it and you should be able to pick up the sound. It's not bad. Sounds, sounds pretty much like a DC permanent magnet motor should sound. So I think we're good. Put some heat shrink on here just to insulate the wires a little better. And I put a quick connect on here so that we can plug and unplug the motor and we can also do some tests on it if we need to. So now this thing's a lot better prepared and I'm confident that it's not going to wear out because this is a hard motor to find. It really is. So, and of course, it's a motor inside a motor. So you have the outer shield, and then you have the inner motor. And it looks like these are 1978, 29th of August, and I believe that stands for 1978, but I'm not sure. And I'll tell you, this thing has a lot of torque now. I mean, a ton. It's unbelievable how strong this little tiny motor is. Okay, we had some time to run for a little bit and it has settled in and it is dead silent. And here's the microphone. Very quiet. Now the, the, the camera is actually making the spindle look like it's going slower, but it's actually going much faster than you're seeing in the camera. But uh, it's got really good torque and I think it's ready to put back in. Okay, you'll have to forgive the background noise because the uh, central air conditioning is on in the house, so you're hearing the blower running for that. But what we're going to do is I'm going to run this real motor. I have it connected just directly to a power supply. And I'm just going to put 5 volts on the motor. And do you hear it running? And I'm going to put my microphone by the transport. Did you hear that? Now, what that is, is not the motor, but it's actually the spindle that the motor is connected to. So let me reposition the camera so you can get a better view of it. All right, hopefully we have the, the lighting correct here and everything. But here's the spindle right here in the middle, which is this part right here. And that's the part that's actually making that little ticking noise. Now, listen to the rhythm of that ticking. And when I connect a test tape to the unit, and I'll try to, I think I recorded some clips of it, I'll try to patch that into the video here, that of the actual waveform, I kind of put it up on the scope. The signal is jittering back and forth at the same rhythm of that ticking noise. So what's happening is this little spindle down here, I'll move it a little bit. You hear how if I push on it, it kind of... See how as I push on it, it kind of settles down a little bit? This spindle is worn and it probably needs to be replaced. It's very simple. It's just held on with a little clip and it just ha it's just it's plastic riding on a metal shaft. So what's happening is with that thing ticking, this wheel right down here is your pinch roller. And as the pinch roller, this will come up. And you can see that it it goes on and drives the uh, the take up reel and listen. It is somewhat quieter, but if you notice also how that's moving around, see how it's kind of oscillating? It's not turning very smoothly. So you notice this shaft is kind of wobbling back and forth. And if you notice the reel, which is right here, is also wobbling. All of that, I mean, it seems like that's not really important, but it's very important. And the reason that it's so important is because that little oscillation of this reel tugs on the tape and the tape is being held 
by the cap stand and the pinch roller. So let me reposition the camera again. So we have that noise, and I'll keep my microphone up here in the front so you can hear everything. And that sound, every time you hear that ticking, it's going to, this thing here, when it's running like this, is going to put a little tug on the tape. As it tugs the tape, it's going to kind of pull it between this pinch, the pinch roller and the cap stand up here. So as a result, what you're going to hear is it's, you're going to just get that little tugging of the tape across the head and it's going to make that jittering <laughs> of your sound. So this has to be perfect. You can't have any noise, you can't have any uh, shuddering or anything of the tape transport mechanism or it will find its way across the tape, across the tape head and you'll, you'll get a distorted sound. And that's what's causing the, the flutter in the wow and flutter. So we need to fix that. And these plastic pieces need to be perfect or you're never going to get a really smooth, clean sound. The other thing is once the head is back on here and the head goes right here in this area, you can see where it's scribed. We have to make sure that the head is okay. I'm, the jury's still out on that. It might be good, but looking at the frequency response right now, I'm not super confident in that. So we may have to find another tape head. Anyway, I'm going to take this back apart so we can service it. I was able to find a real assembly for sale. I don't know if it was any if it's any better condition than this or not, but the pictures looked really good and it should be here in the next day or so so we can rebuild this. The rubber tires, the only place I could find one was overseas, the correct one that I know is going to be what I want. And they shipped already, but since it's international shipping, it can take some time. So again, everything's a waiting game on this. <laughs> now you know why I don't do too many videos on tape decks. I got this little pulley off of here and it was sticking up too far and it was kind of chattering. And this is just press fit in here so I moved this shaft down just a little bit. I tapped it just an ever so tiny amount and this little nylon bushing is still down here, this little washer and putting this on here now there is no play side to side. It's very tight pretty good and if I put some lithium grease on there it'll be even better that'll damp it a little bit and then you can just see the ridge for where the little lock ring goes on there that little ridge right there is just proud of the top of this now so when we put it on it should lock in pretty well and that'll hold it tightly and keep it from chattering hopefully Okay, I have my grandson with me, and if you see a little hand come in to the... Ah! Get out of there! Ah! He's grabbing the camera. If you see a little hand, that's what it is. But take... Oh, let go of the microphone. Yes, it is dead silent. I think we improved this quite a bit. So... Let's work on this a little more while <laughs> my grandson grabs the microphone, and we will be right back. Now, of course, we can't have a project unless something goes flying across the floor, and the little hubcap for the top here went flinging, and uh, yeah, it's gone. I have a spare one somewhere, so eventually I can replace it. But it doesn't affect anything for now. And even if we go to fast forward speed, like there we go. Very quiet. And even though you get you see a little bit of wobble on the wheel here, if you notice this center pull piece is very stable. And it's pretty it feels pretty consistent. I don't feel any tugging. So even though this is kind of moving a little bit, it's not hurting anything. I think it's going to reduce the wow and flutter quite a bit. 
I still don't like this idler tire, although it is working on here. But when the better one comes in, I'll go ahead and replace it. But I just want all this stuff to work first. Now in rewind mode, it's much better, because you notice this spool right here doesn't have any distortion to it. This one here has got a little bit of distortion to the way it's put together, and it's just this plastic. But notice how smooth this one runs. If I reverse it, you can see how that one's a little bit wobbly, and it kind of makes this move. That's not good. Okay, I cleaned it up just like I did the other one. And it's running a lot quieter and smoother now. So we'll see how this works. So there's the giant mess. <laughs> and I'm going to leave this video right here as it is. I think this is a good stopping point for this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cobble all these clips together into a video and get it posted. And then I'm going to start on the restoration of these, of at least the power supply board up here and cleaning out the chassis and all that uh, while we're waiting for those parts to come in because obviously that's going to be our delay. And I also want to remove the pinch rollers and send them out for rebuild. So lots of, of waiting type things like I said. But it is what it is. I mean, these are complicated machines, and uh, little details <laughs> make big differences in how they work. So, anyhow, that's the end of this one for now. And you'll see the other one come up pretty quickly cause, as I work on these, because that's not going to be a big deal doing those. Until then, I wish you all peace, joy, happiness, and good health in your lives. And we'll see you again real soon with hopefully a better functioning tape transport. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.